as anybody at the table. And meetings called to order. Davis? Here. Dirk? Here. Royal? Here. Herman? Here. Hudak? Here. Kaufman? Here. Metz? Here. Miller? Here. Millet? Here. All right. Any questions, comments on the minutes from the October 8th meeting? I'll make a motion to accept minutes as mailed on. I'll second. Any citizen statements? All right, we are on to new business. Ray, do you want to discuss the what's going on with the tennis and the pickleball court? Yes. Um, with the completion of the um, reconstruction of the tennis courts at Menominee Park and the pickleball courts, obviously, um, I expect that we're going to continue to see more requests for um, reserving or renting those courts. Um, I, I know that a number of the pickleball enthusiasts and some of the neighborhood association members are thinking, well, maybe having some tournaments. And um, we've gotten requests from certain groups and organizations to um, reserve those already. Um, as I stated in my memo, we do have a, a long standing under our agreement or arrangement with the Oshkosh Area School District Direct Department um, to not charge them for facility use. Um, and that includes the tennis courts, um, as well as some park shelters that they utilize for some of their summer programs. So, um, and also the, um, the high school tennis program is actually already requested to have the, um, the conference uh, tennis meet um, utilizing the tennis courts there in addition to some other courts in the city. Um, but outside of that, uh, my concern is we're gonna see increased use down there and people requesting to reserve or rent those and being the only four pickleball, outdoor pickleball courts in the city. Um, there's some at the county park, um, but these are the ones under the city parks. Uh, my concern is if we take away those courts from just regular citizen open play, um, that we may get some concerns voiced to us. So I wanted to bring it to your attention, get some input from this board. Uh, if you want us to look at um, developing a, a rental procedure, policy, fee structure? Um, do we want to wait and see after a year to see how things go and don't have a, a, a procedure and a fee? Um, I, at this point, what I'm going to tell groups, if they want to use the pickleball courts, um, that I cannot reserve more than two of those of the four because I really feel we need to make sure that um, two of the courts are available for open play. Um, but I just wanted to have some general discussion here and if there's some direction you want to give us to come back in January, um, open for some from thoughts and ideas. Just to give you an idea, um, Al Wenning is here. He's the, the recreation director for the school district and the rec department. Um, Al um, has requested use of West Haven Park and the South Park tennis courts, and that's uh, similar to what they've done in the past for their youth tennis lessons. And this goes for uh, about six or seven weeks, roughly, throughout the, the summer. Um, adult tennis lessons, they're going to be um, utilizing the Oshkosh North High School. Um, and Al has requested for adult pickleball lessons at the new pickleball courts at Menominee Park. And he has suggested or um, re asked for reserving two courts only. Um, and that would be Monday evenings from 5.30 until 7.45. Um, we have had also um, a request from the YMCA to utilize um, the tennis courts at Menominee Park. And they are looking at Monday evenings, Ju June 10th through July 26th. So again, we've had um, the agreement with the school district um, for no fees and rentals, but I um, want to get some input from the board. Right, you, um, you kind of hit a couple. How many total tennis courts are under the parks department's control, do you know, roughly? Because my thinking is if we're, gonna res we, if we're gonna say put a fee out there, then we should probably do it for all the tennis courts. That's what we Not would just Menominee Park. And I'm thinking also if, Menominee Park's the only one plus the county, I think, has two pickleball courts. Could any of the other tennis courts be converted into pickleball courts with minimal expense? Well, Chad's figuring out the number of tennis courts we okay. have. Um, I would agree. Um, Chad said we have 14 tennis courts. Um, I would agree we're not simply doing this for Menominee Park if we're going to do it. Um, and if, if you were on the board back in 2015, I think, when we brought forward some 
recommendations for reserving yeah. ballparks or ball right. fields. I was on that. We did have a, a comprehensive list of potential fees for basketball courts, tennis courts, if people wanted to those, reserve those for their specific use. Um, at that time, the board, um, we did work with the user groups for youth baseball fields, and what they have done since then is essentially given our department a $10 per participant donation, which we segregate out into a fund for ball diamonds. Um, but at that point, the, uh, the Parks Board did not want to institute a, like an hourly fee or reservation fee for the tennis and, and pickle or tennis and basketball courts. Well, I guess my only thought is if it's going to take some staff time, people reserve it. If there isn't at least a minimal fee, let's just say, they don't show up, who's going to monitor, you know, I mean, you put a reserve sign out or something or they get a sheet of paper that says they have the courts from 9 to 10 or 10 to 11 and they don't show up. Um, you know, I think there's got to be a little bit of a, because we spent what, over a million dollars on the, what was the, re, what was the cost last year? On Menominee Park tennis courts? Yeah. Uh, but just under 300,000. 300,000, okay. Yeah. And to get back to your question about, we wouldn't monitor if people show up, if they request to reserve, um, we give them a receipt through our um, software program. Okay. And then what we would do similar to park shelters is we have a essentially a box that we put a slip of paper in from our computer system saying XYZ group has the tennis courts rented on Mondays from nine until noon or whatever it might be. Um, so that's how we'd handle it. If people don't show up and they reserve, we're not going to be giving a refund. It's, um, you know, you reserved it. If you show up, you show right. up. If you don't, I, you don't. You know, I, I support keeping the, you know, <coughs> the, the agreement that we have with the rec department of school districts. I don't see an issue at all with that. I just think if, we're, if, if organizations are going to start to say have pickleball tournaments and things like that, then I think there needs to be some little bit of, because I'm sure staff's going to have to go out there and maybe blow off the courts a little bit or make sure the nets are upright and check them so there'll be some staff time involved, especially if there's a tournament. Um, so I think, you know, I don't have an, a dollar amount, but I think some minimal fee would be appropriate. I mean, we, we got $300,000 invested in that one, we'll probably be investing and some other ones in the near future that's correct going to be impacting the budget so I'm just throwing that out there for and just to answer your question too uh, Steve mm -hmm. about converting other tennis courts into pickleball courts when we take a look at um, reconstructing or resurfacing those we would take a look at possibly doing so okay my concern and what we want to do is try to monitor how heavily heavily used the pickleball courts are right. um, We've had pickleball players from on the west side saying, you know, we'd like to have 44 parallel or some of these sure. other courts be able to paint those on. And um, what we've said at this point is we're going to withhold doing that until we see the use. Okay. Um, and also when we do the um, the resurfacing, we look at it at that point if we need okay. it more. I know there's a group that comes out to the county park in the summer months, uh, an older group that uses it in the morning. So I don't they have an informal league or just to get together. Mm -hmm. They come out there and they're out there every every day, Monday through Friday. So they do get used. Well, if there's going to be a tournament, I definitely feel that we should charge just like we do for you know the softball, the baseball diamonds. Yeah. You know whether or not we do it for user groups for the Y every week, or if you want to do your suggestion of half are reserved and the other half aren't, and keep a track of numbers and see what happens. And just to, for clarification, the, the wise request at this point is for the tennis courts, um, mm -hmm. not the pickleball. So, um, so yeah. How so many the courts are there? Pickleball, we have four. Tennis, we're down to three. Correct. And they want all three? Of the tennis courts, that would be my understanding because they're looking at possibly registering 50 to 60 kids. Did you say there was a pickleball league or just open pickleball through the record department? They're looking at offering lessons on... No league? I'm, are you are you looking at Mr. Lennick? Are you looking at a league for a pickleball? No. Al, you want to come on up to this microphone, please? Sure. Yeah, Al, so we can grill you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, initially it's just kind of like an open. I think I saw it in your your last year. You had something about pickleball in there. Well, we have indoor pickleball in our recreation gym building. This okay. obviously is going to be outdoors. We're just going to be focusing on lessons to get started. If it grows in popularity, a league may be an option. Uh, we're, we're taking baby steps, just going with lessons at first. Okay. Again, using two of the four courts for that. So we'll limit it and see what kind of response we get. I think, as you know, the game is getting very, very popular. Right. Especially with the 
generation 40 plus uh, it's a little easier game to play uh, for the joints so to speak uh, and it's fun people yeah. are enjoying it okay yeah. did any of the user groups like so you said the, there's a pickleball group and then the Y. Did they do any contribution to any of the courts for, for the remodel? Like as we did that stuff, or was that all done by the parks? It was all paid through city CIP projects. Um, we do have a small group of tennis players and pickleball players that I met with when um, when the project was approved, so that we all came to a consensus on what was agreeable between pickleball and the tennis because we were we did lose one tennis court down there in order to accommodate pickleball, so. We actually have a meeting tomorrow of this small group. They did start a, um, a maintenance endowment fund at the Community Foundation, um, and they've been trying to generate some dollars so that in five or seven or ten years when we have to do some more work down there, we might have a, a maintenance fund to tap into. Um, I don't think that's gotten a lot of traction at this point, but they're going to continue to, to try to generate some a fund potentially to help offset some of that cost. But for the reconstruction there, it was all city dollars. Okay. I, I think that the if the groups are going to be reserving it, that takes it away from people that would want to play. And so I think even if, whether they're charging or not, um, especially if they're charging, but I, I would support a, a fee just to, because they're taking offline for normal people to come and use it, there should be a fee to reserve that. So that's my thought. And for example, the why, could you do the same thing you do for softball on? If you register 50 people, they have to pay a certain percentage for each participant? We can, but then you're, you're making a distinction for one group versus another would be my concern. And, and we did that for the youth baseball and softball groups because um, I think everybody agreed to it. Okay. And I, I don't think we can get all the pickleball users okay. or tennis groups together to do so. Okay. Uh, Ray, how does staff want to see this? I mean, what's, what's the ideal situation for efficiency and ma making it fair from your standpoint? I mean. When we brought forward the uh, facility fee recommendation a couple of years back, we did suggest some nominal fee. Um, it's a per hour rental for those courts. If you're reserving them for your specific use, we can definitely take a look at area communities on what their fees are and come back in January. Um, I agree with the comments so far that if it's for a specific use other than the public entity such as the school district, the recreation department, I, I feel that there should be some kind of nominal fee, but I'm, that's why we're here. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Winning? Thank you. Thank you. Very efficient use of your time, Al. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ted, you kind of know the use that's getting. Is it getting a lot of use out there? I think I've heard talk of pickleball players like them out there and playing, but every time I've driven by, I haven't seen anybody playing on it. So well, not as recent with the weather, but well, earlier. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who's playing? What the heck's going on? Yeah. Up Just until we moved the next, they were pretty heavily used in the mornings. Uh, mostly morning, morning time. Thing. Yes, that's what I figured. You know, early evenings, I can't say I was down there enough to know the amount of participation, but they were being used. So, okay. I think it, everybody knows I spend the winter in Florida a lot, and let me tell you what: you can't get on a pickleball court in Florida. I mean, it, you got to belong to some club or something. It's 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 growing leaps and bounds, so I imagine that'll work its way up here too. So, well, I think maybe for the first year, I guess, or since they're new, I think maybe we don't charge a fee for renting. But if they're going to do like a tournament, or even if the um, neighborhood associations want to put some kind of thing together, that maybe a, just a small, I don't know, fee of some sort, ten dollars, fifteen dollars would be appropriate but until we really know the numbers and maybe as it, it grows and like Mr. Wettick said you know they're going to be doing lessons this year if the <coughs> interest is lessons to let's get a week going you know then that's a whole different ball game then because then the rock will probably have a fee for the league. Can, can we can, can you come back to us with what the surrounding communities are going to do? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah that's okay. Yeah. That's we can bring them yeah. back in January. Thank but I, you. Want, I wanted to get just some direction here today. So. No, thanks. Everybody else is good? Yep. All right. Review and recommend amendments to the Chapter 19 Municipal Code. In your packet, um, you received um, a red line version of Chapter 19, which is the code that, that deals with um, parks and recreation. Um, really, it's a, a 
a lot of it's cleanup, and I'll go through and, and let uh, the citizens know who are watching or, or listening. And uh, there's just a couple items in here that um, are more than just cleanup. So taking a look at um, page two, it's really the listing of our parks throughout the city. Um, the old document had them broken down by community, regional parks, neighborhood parks. For an ordinance, you, we really didn't feel the need to have to do that. Um, so what we did is we just alphabetized them and are, are simply providing a list of the parks, which is sufficient for an ordinance. So that's the, the big change there. Um, page four, number three, as far as amplified sound or music, um, we have, the council has in the past with the special event um, approvals that come through the council, they have waived the 10 p.m. Uh, time when the music can be extended or shut down. Um, but at, so at this point, what we wanted to do is just insert unless permitted by the common council, which has been practice. Um, curfew, this is one where um, I felt looking at this that 6 a.m., uh, the curfew for this is the park hours are closed from 11 p.m. until 6 a.m. Um, I felt 6 a.m. might be a little late in the morning that I, I've seen walkers and people out there at 5 a.m. So I would suggest that we consider changing that to 5 a.m. unless there's some strong feeling that six is. Um, and we can come back to any questions as I roll through. Number two on page five, we added the uh, Memorial Park because it's actually uh, the correct title is Rainbow Memorial Park. And then we were just trying to be consistent and clear up. It's some places said city council, some places it said common council. So you'll see that in number three and five, it's um, referred to as common council. Um, we'll keep rolling through number five on page six um, we just took out the golf course there as far as uh, talking about domesticated animals little Oshkosh um, down on the bottom of the page um, we have not uh, when we get into the CIP update you'll see that the Common Council did approve the um, little Oshkosh renovation um, so it, I'm suggesting is uh, we just leave Little Oshkosh Playground and because it may not be a community built we're still referring to that play structure this coming year um, and just made some minor changes to that revision so uh, the next one sales and parks again just clarifying common council same thing with the next one Ray we got some just on page seven real quick it looks like you already have some language about reservation of other park facilities under two so it might be easy to just add something into the under that chapter if we do decide to go forward with something for uh, fees and that depending on what we would want yep what we would do if you take a look at number one steve um, rental facilities Okay. Um, what we would need to do is bring any rental fees to the Common Council right. for approval anyways, and that would be a part of that resolution that we would bring forward to okay. you. So, uh, I think the next one, we skip over two pages. Um, page 10, the one on letter F, that was just a typo. We just need to take out that hyphen and just make it one word for sailboats in F. Um, on G, transient docking, we took out Riverside Park because um, there are no docks down there. There's a river walk, but that is addressed by talking about the, the Fox River River Walk. So we simply removed the reference to Riverside Park. Uh, next page, page 11, boat launch user fees. Um, we changed the dates instead of March of the year. Uh, we're simply going January 1 till December 31st and adding that they can be sold through our department as well as um, other locations approved by the finance department. This next page, it's, it's a lot of cleanup from, um, this year we, we went from having the, um, a hangar or um, something else for um, the annual, the sticker was on the trailer and this year we went to placing it on the windshield so we made that change in here um, and then if you take a look at number two under B we wanted to be specific to special events or organizations that utilize the Menominee Park boat launch and or parking lot during the navigation season that they're charged the same fee that a boat 
organization or tournament is utilized. We just want to make sure and spell that out. Um, outside the navigational season, um, we would not charge for those events because the boat launch is not in operation, basically. And the one on page 13 under F as far as locations for parking, um, that one, it was just an oversight on my, on my half. I made a note there that I need to confirm with Fox Valley Tech that we can continue to possibly park in their lot. Um, so I just need to do some follow-up on that one. So it's uh, confirm with Fox Valley Tech is my note. So I don't think there will be change there, assuming that they allow that as well. And that really covers what we're recommending. If there's any questions or if you saw anything else when you reviewed it, if there's things that you want us to take a look at. One question I had as far as with the... Uh Tournament organization, you switch it from 200 boats on to 50 boats. Yeah, um, what we've been doing because of the parking issue down there, uh, we've worked with smaller fishing tournaments in the 50 to 75 boat range and offered that to them. Um, what it helps us do is um, it helps save our staff time. We don't have to send the rangers through there. Essentially, we give them placards or something to put in there. Uh, the tournament boat uh, their their vehicles so that we know they're with the tournament um, and if they're not then we can still enforce that I'm just kind of wondered or concerned because you, see you had a minimum of 200 boats at first for $500 a day but now you're bumping it down to 50 bolts still keeping it $500 a day it'd be cheaper for them just to buy the permits for five bucks a day it can and that's um, the $500 per day actually was just increased a couple years ago. It, okay. it was 250, and that's when there were some old fees at that time. So you're right. You know, if they if they want to rent out essentially the parking lot, they can do it for the $500. And it, um, financially, yes, they're better off telling their boaters to use, you know, the daily launch fee. Is there any way that we could kind of, you know, was on the was on the special events fees as far as is there something you could incorporate that with in your um, application as far as how many vehicles they have to, to what the charges as far as so if they only have 50 vehicles you know, so they're not paying 500 bucks they're not going to be using the whole facility or what we do is whenever Kathy gets an application from any boat or any fishing tournament or whatever might use it the sailboats or anything else we do make them aware of this okay and they it, they have that option at least we do tell them you know you can pay the daily fee or you can okay. utilize the $500 per day and some have done that um, even for less than I think we've got a sailboat regatta coming in next year that has I think 50 boats possibly and they've chose to just rent out the, the launch with that is there any problems with say if they say they, okay we, we paid the $500 we get the whole parking lot or or just through the how many vehicles they have parked right it's it goes by the vehicles we give them that number of placards, placards. then yeah. And what we've done is um, we don't schedule ball tournaments and fishing tournaments at the same time any longer just because of the conflict and use down there for the parking. If there's nothing else that anybody wants to add or if you don't have any objections, then what we'll need to do is um, recommend these changes to the council so that we can move those forward um, and like I said on the Fox Valley Tech one I'll just do follow-up but I would expect that that will remain in at this point All right. Second. Second. Yes, what we wanted to do is um, let you know about some of the projects, um, not only in the CIP, but in the uh, um, operating budget. On November 14th, the council adopted, it, adopted both the 2019 operating budget and the CIP. Um, what we did is included in your packet information on the, um, the CIP projects, and we'll go through that for um, people at home so they have an idea. Uh, but when you take a look at this, you'll see that um, the council and the city manager really do appreciate um, this group's input when we prioritize those projects and take those forward. Um, they're able to help us out with some of our top projects, so um, the, the effort that you guys put in is, is not unnoticed. 
Um, so going through Menominee Park, Little Oshkosh play equipment, um, we've had that discussion for some time that um, we really need to get that replaced. Um, we had borrowed about, a, not about, but $100,000 a couple years back, and then we had been working with the various rotary groups to try to do some major fundraising to um, get that project completed. Uh, the fundraising has really come to a, a screeching halt. Um, so what we did was, um, in the CIP in 2019, originally we had $400,000 requested for a new shelter storage building on the north side of Rainbow Park, which we had a couple years ago intended to use for golf carts golf cart storage over the winter months um, and because of what's transpired at Lakeshore um, we felt that that project is going to wait until we um, come through with uh, the Rainbow Park plan in a couple of years or with some of those improvements so we, we requested to uh, reallocate that $400,000 to Little Oshkosh so that's where we came up with the 500000 so 100000 was previously borrowed and the council did approve the additional four hundred dollars for a, a total budget of 500000 Oaks Trail paving, that's the essentially the horseshoe road on the north side of Menominee Park. That project was approved as well, and we'll be working with our streets division. Essentially what this does is pays for material, and our in-house staff completes the work. Boeing Street Vishing Dock renovation, um, what this is, um, the council approved $15,000 um, with our expectation to hopefully um, generate $15,000 in matching funds. Um, what we're looking to do is to replace the wood uh, material that's on that and um, install composite structure similar to what's on the, the river walk. So that project was in approved. West Haven Park restroom renovation. Um, the council has been very supportive of trying to update one of our restrooms every year. So uh, we'll be looking at the West Haven restroom facility over there. Stegbauer Park play equipment and surfacing. Um, $137,000 was actually approved by the council a couple of months back through the Healthy, Healthy Neighborhoods Initiative. And the Neighborhood Association there is trying to raise some additional funds to help um, add some benches and some also uh, to expand the play structure a little bit more. So we'll be working with them um, on that project in the next couple of months, um, looking at a p uh, potential spring project of removal and replacement of the play structure. Ray, there. can I back you up to the restroom in yep. West Haven? Do we have any initial plans and what that's going to look like yet? Or it, what we do, it's similar to the other, um, like the boat launch projects. We go in and essentially demolish the interior, so right. the shell stays, and then we make it ADA compliant. So, if you look at Red Arrow, Tech right. Miller, very similar. Is there an opportunity for a shelter there at the same time? Not with these dollars, no. Uh, for, take the dollars out of it. Um, I think what we need to do, I know Chad has been looking at the structure itself, the foundation and some other things over there. Um, when we have that determination, I think we'll have a better idea. Okay. I, I, just so we make a note that I'd like that to come back here and so we could have a chance to put a shelter along with it, you know, or at least discuss that with the board. Okay. We can update you on, uh, <coughs> okay. we'll know within the next month so we can just report okay. back on what we find at that point. So thank you. Yep. Um, so we talked about Stegbauer Park Master Plan for the Lakeshore site, and you'll, as you notice probably in the ordinance, we're simply refer referring to it as Lakeshore Park at this point. It hasn't officially been named that, um, but we needed to put some name to it in the, um, the ordinance, um, and that's essentially what we are, are calling at this point. We can have you know, further discussion by this board if you'd like to um, rename it something else. But we'll be doing the master plan for that site. Um, I'm putting together the request for proposals right now. My hope is that we will be sending that request out by the end of the year so that we can um, begin evaluating a consultant uh, the first part of January when, after the holidays. So that's a project we'll be working very closely with. Um, I know that there's a number of boards and commissions that want to provide input. Um, we'll be uh, possibly having a joint <coughs> meeting with this board along with um, the Bike and Pedestrian Committee as well as Sustainability Advisory Board. Um, and then eventually whatever uh, comes from a lot of the public input that we'll be having will go to the plan commission for approval and then the common council ultimately. So I would expect that project to take us all of 2019. So Riverside Cemetery roads repaving. This is the, um, what we try to do is get funding every other year uh, to try to keep the roads in fairly decent shape. So the council did approve that funding for 2019. And then the taking root contribution from the city is also included in the Healthy Neighborhoods Initiatives of $25,000. So if you take a look at you know the projects, um, 
uh, just short of a million dollars. And I think that's speaking very well for um, what we have in the parks and I think for the council and uh, the city manager and finance director to support a lot of our big projects, I think is good for us. Just off of that, there was a proposal by one council member to take 225,000 out of the Little Oshkosh, but that got defeated. Actually, I think it was a hundred thousand. Was it? Yeah, I oh. think he was the two twenty-five. I think was from the museum. If oh, I yeah, that's but right. yeah, I think it was a hundred. Yeah, it was, and it was a fair sizable. Yeah, I home. think it was twenty percent is what yeah. we had figured. So, um, any questions on that before I go through some of the? Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. Um, this board doesn't take a look at our equipment replacement schedule, but I just wanted to give you an idea on some of that too, because um, our equipment and vehicles in the divisions. Um, was another about a hundred or five hundred forty thousand dollars of equipment. Um, we have an aerial lift truck in our forestry division. Uh, it's a 1992 model, um, and that project or that piece of equipment has been uh, deferred a couple of years, so that will be replaced this year. That's about a two hundred fifty thousand dollar expense. Um, a chip truck, or when we're out chipping, um, a new truck for them. Stump grinder again for forestry. Um, a compact excavator and a trailer which is going to be utilized not only by parks but cemetery and also we've had some discussions with some other city departments that will be able to utilize that piece of equipment as well and then replacing one of our um, pickup trucks so um, continue to get funding to replace and keep our vehicles in working order as well as far as operating budget couple of projects that um, continue or we are um, getting close to the Eagle exhibit at the zoo um, we have been meeting um, with the foundation and um, are also working with CR Meyer right now to help us out with that project um, we're very close to getting our fundraising goal and my hope is that uh, within the next two weeks we'll have that fundraising goal met um, so that we can begin ordering materials and hopefully um, start that project early in spring um, the city did um, we had seventy five thousand dollars for this year out of our zoo fund um, the, because the fundraising effort has um, stalled on that one uh, the council did allow us to spend another seventy five thousand dollars out of our zoo, zoo fund so we're contributing one hundred fifty thousand dollars towards what's ending up to be about a two hundred and twenty thousand dollar project at this point um, another big project that we'll be taking on is the um, infrastructure for city communications out at Menominee Park. Right now we don't have uh, the infrastructure for internet out at Menominee Park at all. So what we're going to be doing is um, boring from the water filtration plant on the end of Merritt um, over towards the Lake Fly Cafe so that we can get the city's infrastructure into the park. Uh, what we're able to do then is provide internet for some of the buildings. Um, so that's about a $40,000 project that we're working with our IT department on um, to get that completed. That's going to also allow us to begin putting security cameras um, at some of our buildings down there, Lake Fly, as well as within the zoo. Uh, we've had some issues and some vandalism take place at the zoo the last couple of years, and we're hoping that that might help deter some of that. <coughs> A project that Stacy's working on is um, a software upgrade um, to our current software. It's called um, WebTrack is the updated version. It's going to allow us to um, allow citizens to rent park facilities online or on their computer. Um, we're behind the times and um, we've got the funding now to do that. And then eventually um, we're going to take it another step further possibly and um, be able to do some additional point of sale things. Um, rent or uh, ticket sales for some of Jenny's programs throughout the um, amusement areas so that it's more convenient for people to do things online so Stacy's already working on that we're hoping that possibly having that implemented by the summer season and I'm gonna go through Chad and I and, and Bill just met on a whole list of projects for next year and uh, other than ones the ones that I just talked about um, we're currently working on the Lakeshore Park the Riverwalk from the Heritage Trail to, Mon or to Rainbow Park. Um, AECOM is our consultant that we're working with that. Um, I think we're proposing, or not proposing, but hoping to get bid out to that project um, early in January and anticipating the start of that project um, later in March or possibly in April when the weather breaks. Uh, the goal is to have 
that pathway constructed um, by October 1st of next year, um, as Oshkosh Corp is hoping to open their facility by October 15th, and that was one of the city's um, commitments was to try to get that facility completed as well. Um, we had, have the $600,000 donation from Oshkosh Corp, and we were successful in getting a grant from the DNR, which is supposed to be confirmed um, early, hopefully in January. So working on that. Electronic pay stations at boat launches, that one is a project that we just simply couldn't get to this year. Um, it's on my docket to continue to work on that going into the spring. Um, Spanbauer Field, um, give you an update on that. We, um, had, we bid that out the first time and um, we did not receive any bids. We bid it out a second time and the bid came in double what our budget is. Um, talking to the contractors and based on our own experience, um, the weather this fall did not help. Everybody, uh, the contractors were so busy, once they got behind on projects, they couldn't take on new projects. Um, so we're finding that the one bid we got, it was a uh, um, hope by this contractor that we would just accept the bid and we just refused it based on the cost. So we're looking at, uh, for Spanbowers next year, <laughs> Um, in January, we're working with Rettler. Um, they're still under agreement with us to help us with this project. Um, we're going to break it up and simply um, get quotes for the fencing as well as the ball diamond improvements, um, similar to how we've been working at Tech Miller and some of our other ball diamonds. Get those two um, aspects of the project done, see what remaining funds are available to look at the concrete and some of the other work outside of the ball field that we had hoped to do. So we're shifting gears a little bit on that project. We're hoping, um, again, we're sent, gonna send out requests for quotes probably in January, and then um, start working on it as soon as the weather permits again in spring. The Rainbow Park ball field improvement um, with Sid Supley. Um, if you haven't been down there, we uh, work to get a lot of fill hold into the site to get the site built up. It was a very low site. Um, so what we are doing is now that um, we filled the site, um, letting it settle over the spring. Sid continues to do fundraising. Um, and then we are, at, in January, we're gonna send out, along with Spanbauer Field, uh, requests for quotes to do that facility as well. And we're hoping that the same contractor might get it and uh, provide some type of a uh, discount or incentive for us to do it that way. Tech Miller Field, um, wet spring. Um, I think it's... Wet fall. <laughs> wet fall, uh, push that project back. So we do still have some uh, fencing work to complete there along with the batting cage. We did receive the donation from the Oshkosh North Baseball Group um, for the batting cage, so we'll be working on completing that project. So there's a potential that we may have um, three fields next year by the end of next summer completely renovated for use. So Spanbow or Rainbow and, and Tech Miller. Another project we're working on with various departments is uh, the William Waters Plaza, landscape and hardscape. William Waters is downtown um, at Washington and State on the corner and was part of the, the road reconstruction down there. It's a public park. Um, we're looking at doing some improvements down there. So we're continuing to work on that. And then we've just got some, a lot of other smaller projects throughout. So it's gonna be a busy, busy year for us, um, but again, Exciting to get some things accomplished as well. You got anything else that you want to touch on? No. Any questions at all? No questions. All right. Yep, we can move on. All right. The next one is to provide you with an update on our. Um, our department strategic plan 2018 to 2020. What we did is worked with um, Walter Jankowski, who has um, helped the city with the last three versions of the city strategic plan, I believe. Um, he's worked with the police and fire departments to develop their department strategic plans and a few other city departments. Um, we did this work um, early this past winter and into spring, um, and we completed that document. It was included in your packet. Uh, I'm not gonna go through uh, verbatim, but I just wanted to give you and the, and the public some idea of what we're working on. Um, and a number of the projects that we've just been talking about are listed in here. But if you take a look at um, first page to the overarching goals, um, the five that we identified, 
Um, and this was all of our divisions, which includes Senior Center. I'm not going to get too much into the Senior Center because this board doesn't um, really have anything to do with them. But a lot of internal goals as well as project goals. Um, so the first one, improve planning processes and assessment. And you can take a look at some of the objectives underneath that. <coughs> Um, improve our use of technology and online services, improve communications, collaborations, and community partnerships, enhance, improve, and expand special events and programs, and then the final one is to improve our volunteer system and processes. Take a look at the, the next page and hopefully you've read through this. If you have any questions, let me know. But I'm not going to go um, in detail in the first item, improved planning process and assessment. That's really an internal objective and goal for us um, internally with the number of projects we take on and, and delegating a number of those to some of our lead guys um, to take the workload off of some of our managers. So you can take a look through some of those items. Um, the next one, B, complete department priority projects. Um, you'll see a number of projects throughout that and I can kinda, um, go through and give you an update on some. Um, our parks department building, as this board is aware when we come forward with our CIP requests um, is, a, is a building that really needs to be um, renovated or reconstructed and that process is still moving forward. Um, there's not dollars allocated in this, the five-year CIP um, but um, the council will be having a workshop on January 16th um, and this board is more than welcome to come if you'd like to hear it. Um, we're going to have our facility study is going to be discussed by the council at that workshop and then City Hall had an assessment and a facility study done as well. So they're going to have both workshops that evening. Um, I believe it starts at 530 and it's um, going to be at City Hall assuming that the um, elevator project is completed. But um, we're looking at um, potential acquisition of one property and then a reconstruction or a new construction of our facility. So you'll hear a little bit more about that in the next two weeks or so. The next item, Glatz Park renovations that has been completed by our staff. Um, zoo improvements, you'll see a number of projects there. And again, this is a really a three-year document, so um, kind of gives you an idea on some of the um, things we'll be working on there. Um, develop or determine the use of the Lakeshore site was on here, and really what that was was getting the council and this board to um, give us direction as far as a community park or um, other alternative you wanted to look at there. South Park renovations have now been completed. Um, athletic field renovations and updating, you'll see the list and a number of those we talked about this evening. Improving security and safety for our park facilities. Um, that includes the um, lights replacement that we try to do one park a year. Um, installing cameras, auto locking doors on our new facilities. Um, and then adding more patrol in the parks, which we worked with the, uh, the police department on. Next item, continue to enhance and implement bike and pedestrian plans. Um, Stacy's working on an updated map and route distances for a number of our park paths. So you can, um, you'll see that coming in the near future. Improve roads and parking lots and parks. Um, this we work closely with our engineering and transit department on the parking lot study in which parks, um, parking lots are included. Um, the one big one that is in 2020 at this point potentially is the study for the Red Arrow parking lot. As many of you know, that one is on an old landfill and um, there has to be some discussion or determination how we're going to proceed with doing anything there. Um, improved parking at boat launches. This will be happening and taking place over the next uh, several years as we look at Rainbow Memorial Park as well as Menominee Park improvements. The tennis court reconstruction at Menominee Park has been completed. Fugelberg boat launch improvements. The restroom renovation is completed. Parking lots, um, we, we got those ordered. They're here. We just need to work with our electrician to get those installed. And then uh, there's still um, consideration of a south launch ramp um, at that site, which is still ongoing. Pay stations I talked about, that's something I need to continue to work on. The river walk behind the Leach Amphitheater, that project is completed. Uh, there's just some minor renovation or restoration that the contractor needs to do uh, come next spring. Playground equipment replacements, you can take a look at those. Uh, but uh, South Park has been done. Stegbauer will be completed next year. Congress Avenue Tot Lot is one we're working on with our planning division and the neighborhood association over there. That might be a project that they um, may apply for some grant funding for and help us get that one completed. Construct Rainbow Memorial Park restroom shelter building. 
Um, that will be part of the entire Rainbow Park uh, renovations. The Bowen Street fishing dock we talked about. Tennis court lighting, um, when we reconstructed the tennis courts, uh, the lighting was pulled out. Uh, that would be about another $125,000 and working with both the pickleball and tennis groups They didn't feel that lighting was a high priority. So we we kept it in here and we'll evaluate that over the next couple of years Quarry Park restroom renovation um, Developed the master plan for Rouge Park, which we completed this year and we did do some improvements to the bathhouse down at Menominee Park Beach um, That building's in pretty poor condition and we just need to at least take a look at some safety issues down there and um, hopefully try to improve some of the aesthetics, but it's it's a building that's showing its age as well Replace little Oshkosh equipment is going to take place in 2019 and then the West Haven Circle Park restrooms I know it's a lot of projects. Is there any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to keep rolling is Mary Jewel up running a table. The new restrooms, restrooms there Mary Jewel. That'll be that'll be opening next year. Next year yes, it's everything's completed. It's just ready to go come spring. The next section, senior services. I like I said, we'll skip over um, landscape operations. Some of the items that um, Bill has really taken lead on um, improve appearance of city corridors. That's a focus of the council and a number of city departments. So looking at the roundabouts and some of the medians coming in, um, he's um, a couple departments are working on. Um, a plan to improve those and make sure that um, maintenance can be handled complete the annual pruning cycle um, I think what I'm going to do is have bill uh, Make a brief presentation to this board in January So you have an idea on and the citizens know what we're doing on the annual tree pruning um, He's also working with neighborhood associations for additional tree stocking um, Evaluating improving existing landscape in public areas uh, The emerald ash treatment will continue and then um, he's also working with Ann Schaefer on promoting and implementing the Riverside Cemetery marketing plan. Revenue facilities, we'll take a look through there, but there's some leach improvements that we're looking at. Um, some projects that we're looking at. One of the projects for next year is, uh, we call it the trough. It's really the area between the stage and the lighting booth that's at the facility. That um, there's a grate that goes over where they put a lot of the sound system cords and so forth in and that has been uh, the concrete has been chipping and and really um, deteriorating so we're looking to replace that trough next year um, the water park is in here looking at some different uh, improvements and amenities there the amusement center um, this is an area that uh, the carousel we've had some good discussions recently in our department and um, most likely in January, we're going to be bringing forward some ideas and post possible recommendations on what we feel needs to be done with that area. Um, Lake Fly Cafe Amusement Center, just some basic equipment updates and so forth. Uh, the next item, maintain and upgrade equipment, is really what we talked about, making sure that our equipment is and safe and uh, replaced in a timely manner. I'm not going to get too much into that. Improve use of technology and online services. We talked about uh, at this point, we're looking to do um, park facility rentals in hopefully 2019, and then some program registrations available in the future. Um, pool passes in the future may be available to be purchased online, um, but we're gonna take it one step at a time. Um, jumping down to number three, again, it's more of an internal improved communications, collaboration, and community partnerships. It's more of our internal working document and if you take a look at number four enhance and improve special events and programs um, this is an area that um, we've heard increase the number of winter events so we work with the convention center um, the foundation and the hotel and the CVB to uh, get the ice rink up up and operating and they're um, looking at doing one special event down there each month um, I'll talk about more about the ice rink when I do my report and then Jenny's also doing, uh, generating some ideas for new events throughout the year. Next one deals with the Senior Center, so we can skip that. And then our volunteer systems and processes improvement. Um, as you probably know, Jenny utilizes volunteers, and, and Chad and, and Bill all do um, throughout the various areas. And then the Senior Center is, is probably one of the more heavily um, volunteered areas that we have. 
but you can take a look at we're looking to develop a re volunteer recruitment retention and recognition program and then improve our management and training of volunteers so um, we think it's a, a really good document for us we had all of our staff involved with this from um, field staff to our managers to Stacy um, everybody from senior center all divisions were um, given input on this document so any comments or questions Steve I'm keeping you on track for so oh, yeah. um, just as a kind of an update for the board too the council uses the same format so that when the budgets come forward the CIPs they have to be tied to the strategic plan so that makes it a lot easier for when you guys when this board prioritizes things that come forward how it fits into the park strategic plan so it makes it a lot easier for council to make those decisions um, of what is important and what we need because we hear a lot from the citizens especially the user groups that use all our facilities so it's a it's a great great tool Business. All right, Ray, you're back up. <laughs> I'm going to be done quickly because you've heard what we've been working on. Um, the one item is the ice rink, and Chad can talk more about this, but it is going to be up and operating here soon. Um, I just wanted to make you aware of the um, a grand opening event that's being planned again by our what we're calling our ice rink committee. Um, it's going to be Friday, December 21st. Starts at 5:30. Um, if you go to the um, Oshkosh Convention and Visitor Bureau website, visit Oshkosh.com, I believe, um, you'll see an invitation there, but um, there's going to be a, a dinner offered at the convention center. Um, we're going to have Santa, we're going to have reindeer on site, so a lot of pictures for the kids, and then we're going to, towards the end of the night, Santa's going to be out ice skating. Um, so take a look at that, and if you have an interest, I think the number of tickets that are available for the dinner is going to be limited. Um, the public's invited to check that out, and if you're interested to uh, attend that event. But I think it'll be a great kickoff for the, the skating season, which obviously is here early this year because of the, the weather we've had. So other than that, it's um, happy holidays to everybody. And Ray, besides Ashrick, I know we, we cleared off a little bit on Miller's Bay, correct? Do we, we don't provide any warming shelter there or anything, do we? No, we don't. Okay. I sure as a kid, we could go to all the elementary schools and get mm -hmm. skating rinks and army shelters. Yeah. I really don't have much to update on. Ray's covered a lot of things that we're kind of working on collectively as a group going through. I think the highlight is the ice rink that's actually going to be up and running. Um, I had to com uh, compliment our, our crew, did a great job. I think the goal of the committee is try to improve the dynamics and the aesthetics down there with the ice rink throughout the course of the year from what we learned from last year. and. Um, um, should be good. I'm hoping by the end of this week, if things work out, we should be opening. So things will be in good shape. And um, I'm not aware of many other outdoor rinks in the area that are up and running to date. So I think we'll be in good shape, uh, knowing that's going to be in the high 30s and a good weekend. Hopefully, people get out there and use that. So uh, hopefully, to make the call here in the next day or two. Um, for us internally, we've had a lot of uh, good projects inside working uh, with our crews uh, to go on through. Forestry has been uh, heavy out in the trees for doing a lot of pruning areas, mainly, mainly in spots that they can't get to when the snow gets high. So they've done a lot of stuff in parks with us lately, which has been awesome. So then they'll probably venture back to the streets here sometime soon. Uh, as far as revenue facility wise, we're getting a lot of event planning done right now as far as our sequence of events going into 2019. because so we really want to amplify the marketing strategy going into early 2019 to get out to all the different publications. So that's a big part of us, uh, of where we're heading right now. But uh, other than that, I'm happy if the snow stays away and we can have a good winter working on other items. So, but if there's any questions, I can answer those. Ray stole your thunder, Chad, so. Nope, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> any other business? All right, I think that's a wrap. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. I'll second it. All in favor? Second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking you.